So guys, I was browsing Dribble and I was obviously looking for a new idea for the tutorial. And I came across the shot by Cuberto. So if you don't know about Cuberto, it's an awesome design agency. I've been following them for years now uh, on Dribble, and they have some amazing work in design. Uh, you should follow them out too, actually. Um, so they have designed this shot. I've I've seen this shot uh, where they have designed this liquid swipe interaction. Um, they have not just only designed it; they have also coded it, and now it's actually available open source. Um, so I was when I saw this shot immediately, I thought, can we do this on Figma using just the simple prototype that we have in Figma? And uh, before recording this video, I did a small test run. I just did some rough animations in Figma, trying to mimic this uh, liquid swipe animation. And um, uh, it's good to say that I was able to achieve that uh, result. Um, it's actually doable in Figma. So I'm going to show you how it's doable in Figma. So just let's quickly hop onto Figma and we'll design this awesome liquid swipe interaction in Figma. So guys, such a swipe interaction is suitable for an email client like Gmail or Outlook or maybe a notification tray where you swipe the elements and then you get an option to either delete them or maybe archive them. So what I've done is I have set up a similar looking uh, dummy email client here with an inbox view of that email client. I'll quickly show you the components of it. Uh, it's nothing fancy here. Uh, if you see uh, every uh, cell that you see here has a user image a username, uh, the subject of that email, a little bit of the body copy, when the email was sent, and a greet not notification drop uh, dot, uh, which tells you that whether the user is online or offline. So what I've done is I have created this cell and then made a component out of it and then duplicated this component multiple times and created instances out of it. And then given overrides where I have changed the names and the images of the user to create this view. Uh, after creating these multiple instances of the same component, what I've done is I have clubbed these cells together in a group and then changed the property of that group to frame. And uh, if you don't know about how frame works, you should definitely check out my previous videos where I've explained how frame works. Let's move on to the second bit of the interaction, which is basically when you swipe, there's a drop that uh, stretches and then breaks. So uh, to mimic that behavior, let me just quickly show you how we can do that. So what I've done is I have already set up uh, three stages. So a little bit of physics here guys. Um, the first stage is basically a stage which is unstretched of the drop. The drop is basically attached to the, if you imagine, is attached to the right side of the client. So the email client is just attached in the right side of the artboard. And when you start pulling it, uh, it stretches in the center and then finally breaks into two. So there are basically three stages where in the first one, which is the unstretched state uh, where you have not done anything. In the second one, where you have stretched it to the maximum uh, strength. And the third one is basically where it splits into two parts, right? So a little bit of physics there and we are going to mimic this thing. So we need three artboards for these three stages, right? And I'll just quickly show you how I have made this and how you can design this. So in the end, we are going to have two stages and we are going to auto animate between these three stages. So in the end, we are going to have two. So we need to have two components in every one, in every stage. So I'll just quickly show you how, uh, how and what is there. So I have grouped, there are two elements. One is called bot, uh, drop front. I have named it as drop front, which is basically the circular part, which uh, breaks in the final one. So I made it a little bit oval so that uh, when you stretch something, it's not perfectly spherical. It's slightly oval. And when it finally stretches in the final stage, it becomes spherical so uh, i have created this first bit as drop front and then there is a drop back below if i just uh, move it ahead so you can see that so there's this uh, drop back part and then there's the drop front part right and what i've done is i have grouped them together in a group and called it uh, drop right and in the second bit what i have done is uh, i have again the same thing there's a drop front what i've done is i just stretched it out and then there's this drop front again and then again I have made it a little bit more spherical because now you have stretched it so you'll also stretch a bit of the drop as well in the front and in the third one what I've done is I've shrunk the first to like minimum the back part to the minimum and the front part is now almost spherical and slightly apart uh, how to create this in Figma is really really simple 
since this is the stage that is the tech that's taking the maximum and then you are going to compress it so let's just design it very quickly i'll just show you how to design it just grab your pen tool and uh, create the rhombus like shape something like this so yeah now you have something like this now what you need to do is uh, you need to just uh, create curves out of it so what we'll do is we'll hit this and we'll hit our curve tool and we'll do select this just need to fine tune a little bit more uh, so that you get that perfect shape uh, I'm not doing it here because it's going to take some time so uh, you guys should take your time and just fine tune this bit so that it looks really a lot closer to what I have designed uh, which is, looks like this something like more stretchy and all right so yeah so this is how basically you design the back part of the drop right and now you need to design the front spherical so you just grab the circular tool by hitting O and then you just come here and then also give this a same color so now guys you have designed the uh, part just group them together and you have designed the drop here which is in the stretch state for to creating the first stage unstretched state you just take this here and just stretch it out here and then add the oval again in front of it so we'll, you will reach the first stage and in the third stage it's very simple you just move it like this very small make it like one width or two width uh, move it like a little bit apart and then give it slightly more yeah so this is how you define design the three stages of the drop now let's just quickly put it up in the artboards and then we'll quickly wipe them up so <laughs> here you have the first artboard i have also created the other artboards i've just hidden them up so that yeah so in the first stage if you see i'll just move them down as well these three elements yeah so if you see in the first one uh, you have not started stretching the card you have not started swiping the card so uh, you should see the first uh, view of the drop which is unstretched in the second one if you see uh, i have moved the card bit i'll just show you without keeping the content i've moved the card on the right and uh, maybe yeah so i move the card on the right and you can see uh, it's going out of the artboard i'll just do a clip content again so that you don't see it so here i think we have moved it more than the half of the card so at this stage we want the stretching to be maximum and in the third what happens is if you notice this card has moved up and the first card has moved out so i'll just show you how so if you see the card has moved out actually okay so uh, i'll just clip content and the below card has moved up so if you see here David J is visible, David J is up and the below card has come up and the second card has been on the top. Now what we'll do is we'll just plug these together in this artboard and we'll see how it works. We are, we are going to use drag animation and we are going to use auto animate here. Okay. So let's just really really quickly bring them in the screen. So I'll just grab this one and bring it here. I'm just going to eyeball it here because I'm not aiming for perfection uh, but you can just center align these as well this one is the second one I'm just gonna move it here uh, I don't want it so I just moved it in the drum just move it out of the um, earlier frame so that it does not hinder with the email client and I think it's slightly not in the center I'm just so I'm just eyeballing it and the third one you just drop this one as well in the artboard as well yeah, now again it goes in the um, email uh, email group so make it make sure that it's, it's out okay guys um, so now yeah so everything is inside the artboard um, I have not done clipping content for uh, the bigger artboards if I do it then you will not be able to see the first one but let's for now keep it there so that you can see how the transition is working okay guys so now uh, the three stages are wired up we have the first stage un uh, unstretched the second one is stretched and the third one where the drop breaks up and you get the uh, card moving up so now let's quickly wire them up and see how it looks like and then we'll fine tune it i'm just gonna move them a little bit apart so that there's no confusion regarding this let me just do that very quickly yeah 
So I'm going to select the first card here and uh, from the first card what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this to the second element. Now it should not be on tap, it should be on drag so that you should be able to swipe it. You want to navigate to the next artboard, smart animate is on and then you have 300 milliseconds on. So what will happen is uh, doing this Figma will aut automatically try to create a transition interaction between these two stages between the unstressed to the stressed state okay um, and from here what we want that as soon as I am here on the second screen it should automatically break because we have stressed it to the maximum we want it to break it automatically so what we will do is uh, we will drag it till here and instead of on tab we want to do it after delay uh, we want it to happen like almost instantaneously so we will just give something like 10 um, we can get smart animate here again uh, it doesn't matter because it's going to happen very fast so some, even smart animate is not going to make a really difference you can do it instant as well uh, we have set it to ease out so that uh, once the drop breaks it's slightly small uh, slower so that you can uh, view that interaction um, in this one on the drag bit i have given it smart animate ease out again same thing yeah uh, i'm just going to quickly rename these so that's clear so i'm going to call it unstretched um, then I'm going to call it stretched state okay and the third one I'm going to call this output as uh, maybe yeah, breakout okay great so now that we have wired up these three prototypes let's quickly see if this even works or not so guys now we are in the prototype mode let's see if our prototype is working or not so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swipe the first card and if I swipe the first card you see it breaks, uh, it stretches, it breaks and the bottom, the first card moves away and the bottom card moves up. So it's working as intended. Um, but there are obviously two problems here. First, uh, in the last frame you are still seeing this red drop that has broken out. So that's an easy fix. You can just give it an opacity zero so that it will not appear in the final frame. So I think that we can solve. But there is a other problem that we are seeing here right now if I show you again. So as soon as I start swiping you see two uh, shapes. One shape is what? is the stretched shape that we are already uh, have designed but you can see there is another shape behind it which has a lesser opacity than the red on the front and there are two shapes now so it looks slightly weird here and uh, the reason for this happening is we are using auto animate here so what auto animate does is it animates the difference between these two stages now uh, it works very perfectly between uh, shapes if they are like really simple and geometric like uh, circle uh, square or rectangle if that would have been the case uh, Figma would have uh, auto animated really really uh, seamlessly but since now we are using a custom curve here which is like something here and then it's the angle is also changing Figma is getting confused between the transitionary stage till we reach from first artboard to the second artboard the stages that are in between Figma is trying to put something there so that it looks seamless but it's not working out because the angle and the shape is changing so to fix this problem, it's a very simple fix to do. What we have to do is we have to come to the first frame and select the two, uh, uh, two shapes of the drops and uh, we need to give it a zero pass through. So what will happen is uh, it will hide in the first frame so that once there is uh, a transition between first to second, the overlay of the first frame is not visible. So, um, so that you only see the second stage expanding up. So it's still there because we need a reference starting point but it's not visible until you reach to the second one. So Figma will hide the behind screen which is showing in a lighter red color and we'll only be able to see the first one. So I think this should solve the purpose and let's quickly also fix the third bit where the third uh, drop, uh, the third drop has to be, I'll just quickly select it, where the third uh, drop has to have a zero pass through as well. So I'll give a breakout drop a zero pass through as well so that it's not visible. Okay, so let's quickly again see how the interaction works. I'll just fire it up again. And uh, let's just quickly view how it looks like. Give it a time to load. Yeah, so our first uh, frame is loaded here. Now let's quickly see if it's scrolling. Yeah, it's scrolling up and down. Now let me just swipe the first card. Perfect. So if you see, uh, both of the issues are solved now. It's working perfectly and even in the last artboard I'm able to scroll up and down, correct? So I'll just show you one more time how it works. I'll swipe in the left and it breaks up. 
So perfect. We are able to achieve uh, the ones that we saw in the triple shot by Cuberto. We are able to achieve that seamlessly in, I think we are able to achieve like 90, 90, 95% of that seamlessly uh, in Figma, just using the Figma prototyping. Uh, so guys, this is how you build this uh, simple drag liquid swipe animation. Uh, guys, I also wanted to add on a little bit jazz to it, a uh, little bit more to this entire animation. So what I've done is I've added splashes of droplets uh, in the third frame. I'll quickly show you how it looks like in the prototyping mode. So you guys can see and then I'll tell you how exactly to do it. It's a very simple thing to do. So we'll launch the prototyping mode here. And if you see, we have the list again. I've shown you the entire interaction again overall. So if I just swipe it out, works like that. And in the end, if you see, there were droplets, multiple droplets, not just one, multiple droplets. I'll just quickly show you again. I just drag it out from here to here. And yeah, so there was just drops of droplets that were coming out of the final stage. Uh, that's really easy to do. What you have to do is I'll quickly show you. So go in your uh, drop uh, group and add another group called droplets. And what I've done is I've added small uh, ellipses there and I'll show you, I'll change the color so that you can see. So I've added small ellipses here. Uh, just copy these ellipses and paste it in the third artboard again. Same, in the same drop group, in the same name. I'll show you again how it looks like here. Here you have been zero. I'll give them 100% and also give them this another color. Yeah. So uh, I just spaced them out, given it like a four uh, width and height so that it becomes slightly bigger. And yeah, so this is how it looks like. Here it looks smaller uh, in the drop. So I've added in the group so that it moves with the drop. And once the drops break out, it just expands. Uh, I'll show you how it looks like with the smaller drop. So the smaller drop is actually here. The bigger drop, actually the drop front is here. And this is surrounding, these smaller dots are surrounding. So it looks like a splash screen, right? So I'll again give it a zero, the main drop. And we change, we need to change the color to red of these smaller droplets. Mm, yeah. And yeah, obviously we'll give them a zero pass through as obvious in the final stage. This is just an additional add-on guys, not necessary to do. Uh, but I think, I felt that is a small thing that you can do and will make this animation a little bit better. So yeah, this is how it is. And uh, I'll show you the final preview after this video. So if you like this video, do give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'm preparing tons of animation and interaction in upcoming videos. So stay tuned. Goodbye. Take care. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.